So hello, friends. Uh, welcome back after a very long time since I was busy with my professional exams. So today's topic of my discussion is about conscious sedation. So actually, what is conscious? So conscious sedation is defined as it is a very important and a very um, in important question from both the point of view whether it comes to write in the professional exams particularly for the dental students in dentistry this has been a very favorite question and you must be students you might be aware that in dentistry there are basically two broad arenas of patient management there are two broad categories how the patients are managed one is by the non-pharmacological methods of behavior management and the one other is the pharmacological means of behavior management. So this, the use of conscious sedation is particularly used in those cases where behavior management is required, particularly in the dental treatment, in the procedures where uh, dental treatment is to be provided to very young children. So in those young children, the non-pharmacological methods are entirely different class, but the conscious sedation, what I'm going to discuss today, it is the most important and the most widely used, the pharmacological methods of behavior management. So students, it can be defined as the term conscious sedation. The word conscious means something which is aware and sedation means a sleep-like condition. So the definition of conscious sedation states that it is a defined as a state of altered consciousness where the Alter, consciousness is altered and that allows the patient to retain his or her airway and the active reflexes and respond appropriately to physical stimulation or verbal command. So students, while carrying out any kind of a dental procedures in highly uncooperative patients, the use of conscious sedation has been found to be very useful and helpful as well. But the this method of conscious sedation has to be used very judicious, judiciously because if it is not used judiciously, it can be a kind of a, it can be a form of an abuse as well. So it, the, whatever dental procedures, if a very long dental procedure is to be carried out to young children and particularly in those children who are very anxious, who are very nervous. So in those very conditions, in those very uh, in those very kind of children, it is advisable to use conscious sedation that to in a very controlled manner, the conscious sedation is to be used. And as the definition itself is suggesting that conscious sedation is a minimally le minimal level of sedation. It has it provides a minimum level of sedation that retains the child patient to maintain his air and the physical protective reflexes what are present, these all are maintained and the patient is going to appropriately respond even if the, even the patient, even if the patient is having um, a bit of uh, sedation or a sleep-like condition, the patient is going to respond to the physical stimulation or the verbal command, whatever the operator the clinician is saying so the there are basically two ways of conscious sedation there are basically two routes as to how this conscious sedation can be carried out one is by the inhalational route and the other is by the use of systemic agents so under the inhalational routes the most commonly used method it is by the nitrous oxide and oxygen combination and there is a presence of a nasal mask or a nasal hood by which this nitrous oxide and oxygen is made to inhale to the young pediatric patient so that the state of consciousness, conscious sedation is achieved. Under the next category, we are going to have the systemic agents and this systemic agents can again be broadly subdivided into the conventional systemic agents what were being used since a very long time and the next is the contemporary systemic agents which have been developed recently. Okay, sure, I'll be posting on videos. Okay, so the conventional forms of the methods where the systems, conventional systemic agents, what are mostly used for conscious sedation, 
are the mostly the antihistaminic drugs, the barbiturates, the benzodiazepine, the chloral hydrate and the lytic cocktail. So students, as I've already been taking up lectures in pharmacy where I, am, I was giving about the mnemonics. So in order to remember the conventional forms of the systemic agents, which are used for conscious sedation, I have made a mnemonic that is A, double B and double C, where A refers to the antihistaminics, which includes the drugs that is the promethazine and the hydroxyzine. In the next, the two Bs are going to refer to the barbiturates and the benzodiazepines. So the barbiturates, the drugs, what is mostly most commonly used for this purpose, it is the phenobarbiton. And next is the benzodiazepine, where the commonly used drug is diazepam. Whereas the double C, the two C's are going to refer to the chloral hydrate, which is an chloral hydrate. And next is the lytic cocktail. So these are the conventional agents what have been used for a long time for conscious sedation, for the purpose of conscious sedation. Under next category, we are going to have the contemporary agents, the contemporary drugs, what the, the contemporary systemic drugs, particularly what are used for conscious sedation. They include the newer benzodiazepines and the newer his antihistaminics. So the newer benzodiazepines particularly include the midazolam and the triazolam. And next is the newer antihistaminics, the most commonly used drug under this category, it is the loratidine. So students, today's video, I'll be mainly focusing upon the most conventional and the most earliest method of sedation was the nitrous oxide inhalation. So the nitrous oxide is inhalation is mostly done with the help of a nasal mask or hood and the patient is administered it. So so uh, the indications what are particularly there for use of conscious sedation as i've already said that okay as i've already said that mostly the patients who are uncooperative anxious patient and the patients who are emotionally unstable so such patients needs to be treated under conscious sedation and the contraindications or the conscious sedation is strictly not done in those conditions where the patient is suffering, the pediatric patient is suffering from the chronic obstructive pulmonary disease in patients of pregnancy, in, in patients who are having a prolonged, have prolonged surgeries as, as well as in those patients of psychosis. So students, these were the indications and the contraindications. And today I'll be mainly emphasizing upon the most frequently and the most earliest use method of conscious sedation was the nitrous oxide inhalation. So the roots of administration, they can be done uh, mostly the conscious, it is by the oral, rectal, inhalational, the intramuscular and the intravenous roots and the nitrous oxide inhalation, it is the most easiest way just because there are certain advantages. So in the certain advantages, what we find is it is very easy to administer. Doses can be controlled in cases of uh, in cases of nitrous oxide inhalation. Doses can be controlled. Patient remains calm and relaxed. And finally, there is minimum side effects. So minimum side effects are seen whenever the inhalational nitrous oxide and uh, oxygen inhalation inhalational method of conscious sedation is carried out. So students, uh, the concentrations of the drug during various stages, what can be seen. So there are particularly three stages of conscious sedation. The first is the stage of the induction, where we are going to slowly induce the sedation process where the process of sedation has just started. That is, it is the stage of induction. Next is the maintenance state where the patient is maintained in a continuous state of uh, sedation and after that when we bring the patient back to the normal life that is the stage of reversal so there are particularly the three stages and the doses what i have mentioned over here it is yes but there was one subscriber who was asking me about the doses over there so the induction dose for nitrous oxide and oxygen inhalational technique it is when the slow induction process is to be carried out it is from 0.5 to 1 liters per minute and when the rapid induction is to be carried out so in the cases where rapid induction the rapid induction procedure is necessary or becomes mandatory so in that very conditions the administration should be two to four liters per minute and particularly the concentration of nitrous oxide to oxygen ratio is to be 40 
of the nitrous percent of the nitrous oxide and 60 percent to the oxygen whereas moving on to the next stage where the conscious sedation the maintenance dose for it so the maintenance dose particularly comprises of 20 to 30 percent nitrous oxide is to be given and the stage of this maintenance stage is achieved and when the patient the when the operative procedure the long surgical procedure where the patient was very apprehensive that has been successfully carried out and we want the patient to come back to the normal normal life so the reversal of the conscious sedation is mostly done by the administration of 100 percent oxygen so students this conscious sedation has various effects on the body so the various effects on the body can also be seen that during the process when the conscious when the patient is there in conscious sedation there is a decreased cardiac output and increase in the peripheral resistance the cns depression is seen and respiratory rate is also deepened so students this was a short discussion about conscious sedation and I have tried my level best to explain you in a much simpler way the entire classification of the conscious sedation drugs or the agents what are used for it and the exact mechanism as to how the doses of induction, maintenance and reversal is done for a conscious sedation patient. So students, if you have any queries or comments or there are certain topics what you want to be discussed by me, you are most welcome to comment me in the comment section and the students who are visiting my channel for the first time and they haven't subscribed yet, please go do and subscribe my channel and share amongst your friends. So thank you for watching.